Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radio detectives. Today's program is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis using the Zelle app to box13 at greatdetectives.net or become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Now, it is time for today's episode of Casey Crime Photographer. The original air date, July the 10th of 1947, and the title is Lady Killer. The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. <laughs> Listen, Casey, I'm a great man. Huh? What have you done now, Ethelbert? I'm the only man on the block who never saw a flying saucer. Well, that won't put you on history's pages. You mean I won't be famous? No, Ethelbert, you gotta do something. You gotta be outstanding to be famous. Sure, like Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole. Our adventure for tonight, Lady Killer. Mid-afternoon, the cocktail lounge of a luxurious resort hotel in Colorado. A man enters, surveys the place with casual approval, and saunters toward the bar. He's about 35, well-dressed and rather good-looking. But there's nothing distinctive about him. As he waits for one of the bartenders to serve him, he hums an old tune. Would it be, sir? Uh, martini, please. Extra dry. Yes, sir. Say, haven't I served you before, sir? Well, no, I just checked into the hotel an hour ago. This is my first visit to the bar. Uh, I, I don't mean here. Someplace else. Maybe L.A. I worked there last year. No, I've never been to Los Angeles. Denver? Frisco, then? No, I'm sure we've never met before. I've spent the last ten years in Europe. Well, I've never been across the water. Yet. I guess you just remind me of somebody. Yes, I imagine that's it. Yeah, see how this martini strikes you. Uh-huh. Hmm. Oh, it's exactly right. That's how I try to make everything. Call me when you want another. Uh, my name's Frank. Uh, Frank. Oh, yeah? I shan't want another for a while, so I'll pay you now. You are? Uh, keep the change. Say, hey, thanks. Quite all right. Oh, uh, by the way, that uh, fine-looking woman at the corner table over there, you know her? The brunette with the big diamond ring? Uh-huh. Yeah, I know her. Her face is very familiar. I was just wondering... If... <laughs> You've probably seen her picture in the papers. There was a big story about her a couple of weeks ago when she got a Reno divorce from her husband, plus a million-dollar settlement. Oh. Uh, she's Madeline Chalmers. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I used to wait on her back in Toledo, where she comes from. I worked there two years ago. She and another wealthy lady named Utley used to say I was the only bartender they'd ever met who could make a planter's punch exactly right. This uh, Mrs. Utley, she's a close friend of Mrs. Chalmers? Uh, Miss Utley. She was one of them bachelor girls then. Or since she's married a banker named Fisher. Yeah, she and Mrs. Chalmers were pals. Well, I'm acquainted with a banker named Fisher. I believe he married an Utley. Let's see now, his first name uh, is... This one's uh... first name is Douglas. He the one you know? Well, his wife's first name is... Uh... Irene. Irene Utley. Uh-huh, they're the people. I'm told they took a trip to Europe last year where you were. I guess you met him over there. Yes, London or Paris, I think. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Fisher aren't here by any chance. Oh, no, no. Mrs. Chalmers tells me they're up in Maine this summer. Bar Harbor. Well, since Mrs. Chalmers is alone, I shouldn't be intruding if I introduce myself, I suppose. And 
Inquired about my friends, the uh, fishes? No, I don't think so. I'll see you later, Frank. Uh, thanks again, Mr. Uh, uh, thank you. How do you do, Mrs. Chalmers? I beg your pardon? I can see you've forgotten me. Irene Utley introduced us several years ago in uh, Toledo, I think it was, uh, before she married Doug Fisher. Oh, you're a friend of Irene's and Doug's? Well, I spent a day with them only a week ago in Bar Harbor. How are they? Irene hasn't written to me in ages. Well, they were fine, enjoying themselves. Uh, may I sit down and order us... Uh, I seem to remember you had a preference for planter's punch. Uh, do sit down. Thank you very much. I'm terribly embarrassed. You remember even my favorite drink, and I can't Well, recall. unlike you, I have a face that people soon forget. My name is Grammerton, Cecil Grammerton. Cecil Grammerton. You uh, plan to stay here for some time, Mrs. Charles? At least several weeks. Well, I'm going to remain about the same period, and uh, if you'll permit our acquaintance to ripen, I'll try hard not to be forgotten again. Come in, Cecil. Thank you, Madeline. Oh, you look lovely this evening. More so than usual. You like this gown? No, no, it isn't the gown or the perfection of your hair or those magnificent diamonds you're wearing. That's simply you. <laughs> Cecil, you always say the right thing. I'm afraid you're what my dad used to call a lady killer. Lady killer? Or a wolf. Oh, well, now do I look like a wolf or a lady killer? No, which makes you doubly dangerous. A week ago, when you came to my table in that cocktail lounge, I thought what a mild, negative, innocuous man you were. And now? Now I'm in my suite alone with you. I sent my maid away tonight, as you requested. Which proves? I like you. Sit down. Mm-hmm. Hand me a cigarette, will you? Yes, of course. Here you are. Thanks. Light? Mm-hmm. You, uh, only like me, Madeline? Last night I told you that I loved you. And I almost believed you. Didn't believe me? A rich divorcee should be careful, especially when she knows a man no better than I know you. You'll get better acquainted with me tonight. You sure we're really alone here? Of course, dear. Now, what do you want to know about me, hmm? I'll hold you close as I tell you. Do you suspect I'm a fortune hunter who wants to marry you for your money? That's a possibility. But I'm comfortable in your arms. It's an impossibility. I wouldn't marry you for any amount of money. You wouldn't marry me? Or anyone like you. Oh, Cecil, let go of my throat. Take your hands away. I'll tell you what I am, Madeline. Cecil! I'm really a lady killer. Really a lady killer. Such nice diamonds you had, Mrs. Chalmers. You won't need them anymore. Hey, Walter. Yes, Ethel Wright. Don't forget to stack some more paper napkins under the bar. Speaking of paper reminds me, Casey, did you see the newspapers this morning? Certainly not. I only work on a paper. I don't read them. There's a deep suspicion, Ethelbert, that um, no press photographer knows how to read. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that, Miss Williams. It's also suspected, Annie, that few reporters know how to write. Oh, yeah? Huh. <laughs> yeah well, anyway, your morning express had an article saying that fellow who's believed to have strangled Mrs. Madeline Chalmers in Colorado last month, you know, is thought to be hiding in this town. 
Is that true? No, it's baloney. Confidentially, Ethelbert. Papers all over the country got such a swell front page spread out of that Colorado hotel murder, they're trying to keep it alive. Oh, wait a minute, Annie. Don't be skeptical. The police have pretty definitely tied him up with a murder of seven other wealthy widows. Well, it's not known for sure that Cecil Grammerton has killed and robbed other women. That's just some more newspaper buildup, huh? Not in my book or in the cops. Listen, during the last five years, seven other rich women have been strangled and their valuables stolen under nearly exactly the same circumstances. Casey, people in that Colorado hotel who saw Grammerton every day don't give a description of him that agrees with the men suspected of the other crimes. Well, they don't agree with each other in the descriptions of Grammerton. He seems to be one of those negative-looking guys nobody ever remembers. The bartender out there remembered him, according to what I read. All he remembers about him is that he was always humming sentimental songs. That isn't very much to go on. Whenever there's a sensational crime, a witness usually turns up who tries to get into the spotlight by telling a lot more than he really knows. Mm. Say, come on, we've got to get out of here, Annie. Oh, yeah, we're due at the uh, Fenimore Plaza in uh, ten minutes. That's right. What are you going to do at that swanky hotel? Oh, one of those lousy assignments. The Express has an exclusive tip that the Clara Simmons has broken her engagement to the Charlie Fawcett. And we're getting a confirmation or denial from her before we pass the news to our palpitating public. Clara Simmons is the oil, Harris? Yeah. Mm. Worth about 20 million. What I've heard, though, she's kind of a wet smack. She doesn't smoke, she doesn't drink, she doesn't uh, approve of modern bathing suits. She's a very nice girl, Casey. She's just a little bit old-fashioned. I've met her. I haven't met an old-fashioned girl for years. They're old-fashioned now. Yeah, the... <clears throat> oh, well. Come on, Annie. See you later this evening, pal. <laughs> so long, Ethelbert. So long, Walter. Or so long, Casey. Walter, where are those napkins? <laughs> The report you heard is altogether correct, Miss Williams. Mr. Fawcett and I have broken our engagement. Uh, do you care to give me the reason, Miss Simmons? I can only say that he and I agreed upon the termination and that we shall remain the best of friends. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm expecting guests. Uh, may I take a picture of you before we go, Miss Simmons? I'd rather you wouldn't, Mr. Casey. Oh, well, we can run one of your old ones that we have in our files, but you look so nice this evening, I'd rather... <laughs> you know that no woman can withstand that kind of flattery. Take your picture. Thanks. Uh, will you stand over there by the piano, please? Surely. Casey wasn't guilty of flattery, Miss Simmons. That gown is charming. Thank you. Do you like the style? Uh-huh, very much. I haven't seen anything like it. It must be the latest. It was 20 years ago. My mother wore it then. Your mother? She wore it to a ball only a week before she died. I was just a child then, but I've never forgotten how pretty she looked. I kept in. I had it made over to wear tonight. Some big event must be scheduled for tonight. Eh? It is, Mr. Casey. Will you take your picture now and then excuse me? Oh, sure, sure. Oh, oh, I'm afraid I'll have to answer that. I've given my servants the evening off. Evening, Clara. Come in, Evans. Where's your mother? Well, she phoned that she'll be delayed. She'll join us here in a little while. Oh. Oh, uh, you have guests. This lady and gentleman are from the Morning Express. They're leaving right away. Miss Williams, Mr. Casey, this is Mr. Pentecost. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Hi. Pentecost? Pleasure. Sit down, Evans. Mr. Casey is going to take a picture of me. Very well. Oh, will you stand by the piano again, Miss Simmons? Well, yes, of course. Like this? Yes, yeah, that, that's well. Ah, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, I hope you won't think me rude well, if I ask... Oh, not You've been very kind. Thank you very much. Good night, Miss Simmons and Mr... Uh, uh, Pentecost. Evans Pentecost. Uh, good night. Good night. Oh, and uh, thanks again. Yeah, you bet. Not at all. Why were those newspaper people here, Clara? To ask me about my engagement to Charles. I told them I'd broken in. Oh, uh, to tell them why? I didn't say a word about you. Evans... You said you were bringing your mother here to meet me. I sent the servants away, as you requested, so the three of us could be completely alone. But since your mother's been delayed, I think uh, you should... You're worried about us being alone? Why, naturally. You're very different from other women I've known. We'll go down to the mezzanine and wait for your mother. Why? Well, I... You're lovely in that gown, Clara. Don't try to change the subject, Evans. My mother once had a gown like that. 
Be a good boy now. Let's go down to the mezzanine. We must be alone or you wouldn't be so insistent. Why, of course we're alone. Alone? Evans, why do you look at me like that? We're alone. Evans, you frighten me. All alone. Don't come any closer. Go away, Evans! Don't touch me! At the end of a long, hot summer day, listen for the tinkle of ice cubes on Frosty Crystal. Cool summer drinks are doubly inviting when served in the amazing new Sunburst Crystal. Now, this truly fine crystal has the radiance of a diamond. Its brilliance is like rare old hand-cut crystal. And now, thanks to a revolutionary new anchor-hocking manufacturing discovery, you can enjoy this magnificent crystal at unbelievably low prices. Imagine a sunburst crystal glass for fruit juice priced at only five cents. Imagine ten-ounce table tumblers, two for fifteen. Big oversized glasses for ice drinks, only ten cents each. And a beautiful matching two-quart pitcher for only fifty cents. That's what you'll find tomorrow and Saturday in the windows and on the counters of the retail stores of America. Prices slightly higher in distant cities. Don't put it off. Enjoy Sunburst Crystal this weekend. Sunburst Crystal is a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. I have a taxi cab for you, uh, Mr. Pentacle. Thank you, boy. It's la, la, outside this door, sir. Uh, you've put my baggage in it? Yes, sir. Everything's all set. Uh, here, this is for your travel. Thanks very much. I hope you'll be our guest at the Fenimore Plaza again, and very soon, sir. I don't think I shall be. Union Terminal Driver. Goodbye, Mr. Pentacle. Goodbye. Bellboy! Huh? Bellboy! Yes, sir? The guy who just got into that cab. Where was he going from here? It's against Fenimore Plaza rules to give out information concerning our guests, sir. Nuts with rules. That guy's a murderer. A what? I was bartender in the Colorado Hotel where he killed Mrs. Chalmers. That guy's Cecil Grammerton. Grammerton? The lady killer. Get the cops after him, quick. Then find out what dame he strangled here. <laughs> Grammerton got away, Captain Logan. Yeah, he did, Miss Williams. My men located the cab that took him from this hotel, but he'd gotten out of it with his baggage only a few blocks from here. He didn't go to Union Terminal where he told the driver to take him. Oh. Where he is now is anybody's guess, Casey. You said he didn't hurt Miss Simmons, Logan. That's right. She was hysterical when they found her, but otherwise she was okay. Well, she was hysterical because he tried to kill her. Oh, he didn't even lay a hand on her, Miss Williams. What? Yeah, the thing's screwy the way she tells it. She says she suddenly got terribly afraid of the guy. He started to reach for her, and there was an insane look on his puss. And all of a sudden, he drops his hands, mumbles an apology, and walks out. Hmm. Of course, you searched the rooms that Grammerton occupied. Sure. Well, did you find anything that might lead to... Oh, uh, nothing that looks very hot. Just an old photograph. Uh, a photograph? Yeah, of a woman. I'd say it was taken 20, 25 years ago. It was in a nice leather frame and obviously slipped out of one of the guy's suitcases. Can we see it? Yes, but there's to be no mention of it in your paper. I'm not tipping Grammatan that we have the thing. Oh, it's off the record, love. No, yeah, of course. Okay. Here it is. Oh? oh you're a sweet-looking old lady. Hmm. Oh, too sweet. She's a prim and prissy type. Uh -huh. Hey, look, the name of the photographer who took this picture is at the bottom, Logan. Perkins. Name of the town. Yeah, uh, Perkins of Fairview. Fairview, that's only about a hundred miles from here, isn't it? I'm taking a trip up there tomorrow. Oh, huh? Eh? I'll go with you. Okay, but you may be wasting your time. It's my job to go. Hmm. Well, I got a hunch it won't be wasted time, Logan. And I've got another hunch. A hunch that no newspaper guy should get. Yeah, what's that? That you should kill the entire story of what happened tonight. Kill the story? Yes, Annie, every bit of it. Oh, it's big news, Casey. Front uh, page. It doesn't matter. Put that bartender under wraps, Logan. Oh. Tell the hotel people and Miss Simmons to clam up about what they know and give all the papers a hush-hush order. <laughs> Since this is the first time I ever got that kind of advice from a news hound, I'll take oh, it. Oh, you should be thrown to the squirrels for this, Casey. Oh, no, Annie. The big story will be Grammerton's arrest, and we'll play for an exclusive on that. 
Logan, how soon can we leave for Fairview? Why, oh, yes, Captain Logan, I took this picture of the lady, uh, oh, 20 years ago, I'd say. It was shortly before her death. Oh, she's dead, Mr. Perkins. Yes, she died of pneumonia. Well, who was she? Uh, Mrs. Aza Bristow, a very fine woman. I was her neighbor for many years, and we attended the same church. Did she have any children? Well, she had an only son, Elmer, an extremely well-behaved boy. They were inseparable, and her death was a great blow to him. He was only about 15 at the time. Oh, uh, you know what happened to this Elmer? No, no. Relatives took him out west to live, and I've heard nothing of him since. Could you uh, describe him, Mr. Perkins? Well, I knew the boy so well I should be able to. <laughs> you know, that's strange. I can't just seem to remember what he looked like. You, you can't? Well, he, he uh, well, there was nothing about him. All that I can really recall is that he had a great attraction for girls and... Older women, although he seemed to care nothing for anybody but his mother. Hmm. And, uh, and he had a habit that was frequently irritating, a, a habit of humming sentimental old songs. Uh, ah. I'm sorry I can't be of greater help to you. You've helped plenty, Mr. Perkins, and thanks a million. Let's go, Logan. Yeah. I'll probably get in touch with you later, Mr. Perkins. Well, I'll be at your service, Captain. Goodbye. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye. He couldn't have given us a better description, pal. Yeah, but what does it get us? Apparently, the lady killer's real name is Elmer Bristow, and he had a doting mother. Now, wait a minute, Logan. I think he developed what the psychological docs call a mother complex. So what? So it finally made him go haywire and start killing gals like Madeline Chalmers. Listen, Logan, all of the eight women strangled by this guy were direct opposites of his mother. They were unconventional babes who did all the things that Mama had taught her only son to despise. Casey, he did those murders for dough. Those thefts will send him to the chair instead of an asylum when he's caught, Logan. But his real motive, I believe, was hatred of a type. But he proved that last night when he didn't hurt Clara Simmons. Because I think she was the same type as his mother. And that old-fashioned dress she had on, she may have... Well, he may have seen her all of a sudden as his mother. Yeah, you may be right. And... From what you've just suggested, maybe we can figure a way to make him walk right into our hands. Of course we can. And by using your dear old power of the press and Clara Simmons. Gerard! Uh, yes, yes, Dorothy? Must you gaze into space and hum those corny songs? I must be dreadful company. Oh, I beg your pardon, darling. I, I, I was thinking. Light me a cigarette. Oh, sure. Shall we get another drink? Oh, not now. Sitting here on the beach has made me lazy. We're going to look out at the beach from your apartment tonight. Alone. Mm-hmm. Until tonight, every, every minute will seem like an hour. That romantic line is pretty old, Gerard. Yeah, well, I'll try to do better next time. I hope you do. Oh, speaking of romance, did you see this morning's papers? No. Oh, there was a silly story about that frightfully rich Clara Simmons. Clara Simmons? Yes. Ever meet her? What? No. I have. She's a drippy little thing. What did the papers say about her? Oh, she's very ill. Ill? Pneumonia. Pneumonia? Brought on by a breakdown... Caused, the paper said, by erect romance. I see. Well, did the paper say where, where Miss Simmons is? Well, she's in the city hospital, I believe. Dorothy, will you excuse me? I've got to go back to the hotel. Well, why? I've got to put through a long distance call, business. I may have to leave here on the very first train. Leave? Well, what's happening about tonight? Well, nothing, to my regret. Because, Dorothy, you're just the sort of woman I love to find alone. There he is, Captain Logan, the man getting out of that cab. Fine, Miss Simmons. Well, Casey, our cockeyed scheme worked, eh? I was pretty sure it would. We knew he'd fallen for it after that long-distance call came through to the hospital. When they told him I was really ill, Miss Williams, 
He came to me. Well, don't think of what he's doing now, Miss Simmons. Think of what he has done. Yes, I must. Oh, here he comes, Captain. This is it. Hello, Elmer Bristow. What? Will you let go of me? You're a collector of jewelry. Here's a pair of bracelets for you. Oh, what's the meaning of this? What? Clara. Clara. Yes. But you're not ill. This was a trick. Yeah. Now a few uninhibited rich gals are going to enjoy longer lives. Take them away, man. Now, come on, Miss Simmons. I'll help you back to Annie. Huh. Miss Simmons is crying. What has that insignificant-looking guy got made the women fall for him? Casey, if he wasn't on his way to jail, I think I'd try to find out. Yeah. Huh? We gals crave romance. And if we don't get it from overwhelming personalities like yours, well, there are a lot of Elmers. Hmm. Annie, uh, I think there's going to be some nice moonlight tonight. Yeah? Uh-huh. So? Well, poor little Miss Simmons needs comforting. Maybe I should invite her to go out with... Ow! Ow! Oh, I'm so sorry, Casey. I didn't mean to kick you in the shin. We'll join the crowd at the Blue Note in just a moment. You know, beer isn't the most important thing in the world, but it certainly is one of the pleasantest. And Anchor Hawking's revolutionary new one-way bottle makes beer and ale easy to enjoy. You know, it took a lot of research to develop this one-way bottle. It had to be light, compact, sturdy. It had to be so low in cost that no deposit, no return to the store is necessary. And that's what it is. A little wizard at fitting into packed refrigerators. Easy and safe to open. Easy and safe to drink from. No trouble about returns. When it's empty, just throw it away. And best of all, it's glass. Glass that can't affect the flavor and purity of beer and ale. Glass that keeps your beer brewery bright. You will find 12-ounce no-deposit bottles of your favorite brand at your local store. For beer at its best, ask for it in the new Anchor Glass One-Way Bottle, a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Uh, this guy, Elmer, admitted all his murders, huh? Casey? Yep, he's a psychopathic case, Edelbert. When his kind start talking, they keep it up. You know, that guy's proud of all his killings. He's bragging about them now. A nice, sweet guy. Yeah. Mm. And you got him to come back here by figuring Clara Simmons had the engine sign on him just as his mother had, huh? Mm, yeah, he couldn't let her die of pneumonia as his mother died without trying to save her. Mm, so clever, this Casey. Expert photographer, consulting psychologist, and eminent authority on affairs of the heart. What? You sound bitter, Miss Williams. Do I? Well, Annie, I'm not responsible for this rain tonight. Who said anything about weather? Well, if it had been a nice moonlit night, I thought... I'm that... not interested in what you thought. Oh. <laughs> to a person with even the slightest imagination, moonlight is non-essential. Oh. Well, uh, care to take a drive in the rain, Annie? Well, if the right person invited me properly. Oh. Miss Williams, will you go for a drive in the rain with me? I'd love to have your company. <laughs> Why, yes, Mr. Casey. Where shall we drive? Poor Clara Simmons must still need comforting. How about calling on her and... Ow, my other oh, shit! So sorry, Mr. Casey. Clumsy of me. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor glass containers, anchor caps and closures. All products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass.
Apropa is directed by John Deets. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town. So stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, love hurts, uh, particularly when it's with Ann Williams, apparently. I guess there is a bit of irony in the idea that Casey comes up with all of these complex psychological theories and can't seem to understand the basic uh, fact that Ann has a uh, romantic interest in him. BlueNoteBulletin.blogspot.com actually notes that... Uh, with, uh, the small town that uh, the killer was from is called was called Grammaton, and uh, Grammaton was actually uh, a uh, street in Mount Vernon, New York, where Alonzo Dean Cold lived before moving to Connecticut. So that's where he got the name for the uh, town. And he, I do wonder if that was uh, intentional. Uh, the lead character in my detective novels, Cole Eustick, which I intentionally thought of by taking an intersection here in Boise. There's a corner of Cole and Eustick, and thus uh, that that's where I came up with the name. But with just uh, Grammaton, uh, might have just you know stuck in his head, and it's like, oh, uh, where are we going to name a town, Grammaton? I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Lisa, Patreon supporter since April of 2016, currently supporting us at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support. And uh, that will do it for today. If you do enjoy this podcast, please be sure and rate it wherever you download your podcast from. If you are listening to this podcast on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and select the bell to be notified of new episodes. Join us back here tomorrow for The Fat Man, and then we'll be back next Monday with another episode of Casey Crime Photographer. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.